Hey team, this is Will with Lexa Moto, and today we want to talk about the S35 speakers. We will cover what's in the box and how to install them. And here is what comes in the box. Main speaker, slave speaker, antenna, iron coil bracket, remote bracket, 3M sticky pad, wire remote control, M5 Allen wrench and M8 Allen wrench, five zip ties, four screws, SAE power cord, bushing parts, four thin, four thick, Okay, now that you know what comes in the box, before we move to installation, I want to cover what all these cables are. First up, this red and black cable. This is the SAE power cable. Next up, you're going to have a black cable with this copper colored connector. That's going to be for your antenna. Right next to that is going to be an additional USB port. Next up, you have two black cables that are very similar in appearance. The thin cable with the male connection, that's going to be going to the remote. The thick cable with the female connection, that will be going to the slave speaker. These speakers have integrated blinkers built into them. In order to make that function work, we have two additional wires, purple and blue, that are in the wiring harness. You would hook up purple to the right turn signal and blue to the left turn signal. If you do not wish to run these turn signals that are built in, all you would do is tuck these away somewhere in case you wanted to use them later. Lastly, there's this yellow wire. It's the accessory wire. It will allow your speaker to come out on and off with the ignition. Okay, Team Lexa, now that you know what comes in the box and some of the details about the speaker, let's talk about how to install the speakers. Using the supplied two Allen wrenches, go ahead and remove the bracket from the bottom of the speaker. Once the bracket is removed from the bottom of the speaker, I want to go ahead and open them up. To do that, I will remove the smaller Allen bolt. Next, I want to figure out what bushings to use. Remember your kit comes with four thick bushings or four thin bushings. For this setup, I'm going to use one thick on the bottom and one thin on the top. The clamp will have detents in the bottom of the bracket, so that way it will allow the rubber bushings to lock into place. Once you find a suitable place on your handlebars or risers if you choose to, go ahead and mount the two clamps onto the bar or riser. Start by putting the clamp on the bar and then putting in the, the small bolt that came out. <clears throat> Once you get that bolt in and kind of snug, don't tighten it just yet, you will then grab your speaker and go ahead and install your speaker on the bottom side of that bracket. Put the speaker back on. We will put it underneath where we just want it to go and we will use the big supplied bolt that you removed previously. Once you get your speaker installed before you tighten everything up, you want to go ahead and get everything fully adjusted in the location that you want that fits your bike and your comfortability. So I have mine here straight on. I'm going to go ahead and tighten everything down now. You will repeat the same process for both speakers. Once you have both speakers mounted to the bars, go ahead and connect them now. Remember, it's going to be the thick wire with the four pin female on the main speaker, and then there's only one wire on the slave speaker. You can route this however you'd like. For this bike, I'm going to tuck it behind the risers, kind of like so. I connect those two speakers together. And right now I'm going to leave them loose, but I will come back and I'm going to zip tie them kind of up under here. 
But for now, I'm going to leave them like that. So don't forget to secure them according. I would zip tie them in there just like that. After you have the two speakers connected next, you want to install your remote. I'm going to go ahead and install mine directly to the right of my hand control for easier access. To do that, you will need the supplied iron core clamp and the rubber gasket. Let's go ahead and start by peeling the sticky off of the rubber gasket. You go ahead and stick that to your handlebars. Then you will run the, ho the iron core clamp through the mount. So you look something like that. Then you will slide it over the bars. So once you get the clamp around the bars, use a number two Phillips to go ahead and tighten it secure. Once your remote is mounted, the bar is now started to connect it into the wiring harness. Again, this will be the thin cable with the four male terminals. We're going to go ahead and connect those now. After installing your remote, next up is your antenna. This is optional. If you're going to use the AM, FM radio, you will need this. If you're not going to use that, then you will not need this. Connect it by connecting this brass or copper color connector to this copper color connector screwing it tight has a 3m sticky tape that you will attach to whatever location you choose for me i'm going to go ahead and install the antenna right here okay so once you get everything mounted up front and you get all the wires right through the triple tree next up is going to be to take the rest of these wires your turn signal ignition and power wires and run them up under the tank so to do that the first thing i'm going to want to do is I'm going to remove this seat and remove this side cover Okay, once the seat and the side cover off, I'm going to go ahead and route those wires under the tank and get those back to this area so that way I can connect them to the appropriate spots. Okay, so once all the wires are out under the tank appropriately, I'm going to start with connecting the SE power connector. Boom. I'm going to also go ahead and try to route this out of the way. This particular bike, it's a 2020 Softail Street Bob. It comes with a SAE power connector already installed that's fused protection and the battery is relatively hard to get to on this bike. So I'm not going to install the SAE power connector on this. In the event you're not familiar with this connector or how to install it, I have a battery to show you here today. So this is a 12 volt motorcycle battery. So if you need to install this on your bike, locate the battery using your service manual. And then what you would do is you would take this fused SAE power connector and you would install the red wire to the positive terminal and then the black wire to the negative terminal. Okay, after the SAE power connector is hooked up, what's left is the three wires. Purple and blue are turn signals, yellow is ignition. So purple wire is going to go for the right light. Hook that up to your right blinker. Blue Blue is going to be for your left blinker. Let's hook that up to your left blinker. If you have any trouble understanding where to tie these into, refer to your service manual. Yellow is going to be for your ignition wire. You can hook this up in a couple different places, but the main objective is when you hit your key or your switch on your bars, that that's when this wire gets voltage, and when you turn your key or your switch off, this wire loses voltage. So where I'm going to hook it up right now is going to be the tail light. Okay, now that you have everything installed and all the wires hooked up, let's talk about the functions. To turn the unit on, you must have the ignition on. You will press and hold the power button on the remote. So basically press and hold the remote straight down. Bluetooth note. When the unit is on, you have two options for powering off. If you hooked up the ignition, you can turn the ignition off and it will power down. Or you can press and hold the center button again to turn the unit off. Power off. The unit for the first time will power up in Bluetooth mode, unpaired. So you will then need to pair it to your Bluetooth device or your cell phone. So to do that, just find S35 in your Bluetooth settings. You're now connected. 
To start and stop your music, you will single press the center of the remote. So to start my music, I'll single press. To pause my music, I'll press again. Now to skip track forward and skip track back, I will push the remote to the right or to the left. So once music is playing, to skip music forward, I'll push the button to the right. And to go back, I'll push it to the left. For volume up, I can press and hold or I can single tap. And for volume down, I can press and hold down or I can single tap. I'll show you that now. Press and hold. Then incrementally pressing up. Now incre incrementally pressing. If you chose to use the blinkers and you have your blinker wires hooked up, you will see the blinkers on the left and the right. If I push the blinker to the right, blinker comes on, you will see it flashing. If I push the left blinker on, you will see it flashing with the left blinker. Factory, the trim lights are set up to be on. If you don't like that and you want the trim lights to be off, you will double tap the remote to the right. And now the trim lights will be off. This unit is also equipped with the AM FM radio. This will only work if you have the antenna installed and functional. How you would get there from the Bluetooth mode would be you would double tap the center of the remote. FM mode. And to get back, you again would double tap the center of the remote. Bluetooth mode. 